The Michigan League of Conservation Voters is the leading nonpartisan political voice working to protect our air, land, water, and Great Lakes in this magnificent state that we call home, which is Michigan. Um, the organization came to be um, in 1999, when a number of people who had been involved in conservation and environment for quite a long time got together and said, there's no organization that uh, was working specifically on electing people to office who shared these values and then worked, and then no organization that was working to then hold those elected officials accountable for their actions. So we all learned back in the day of Schoolhouse Rock about how a bill became a bill, right? And we learned um, a lot of things about how our, our, our government works, but in fun and interesting and engaging ways. We have done such a disservice in this country by taking away our civics education in our schools. And as a result, we have a, a couple, I would argue a couple of generations of people who are now voters and active in their communities and care deeply about you know, their schools and their, their kids, but really have very little sense of like how the systems work. We have proudly issued a scorecard since this organization was started in 1999. It was first a paper scorecard. And as technology and things have changed, we've been able to now to do what we call a real-time scorecard. So we can actually score our legislators in real time as they actually cast that vote. This is just a singular tool, one among many that we actually um, look at when we're thinking about actually moving into our elections mode. And in fact, it's an accountability tool. It's a way to hold our legislators accountable. There are many times where we'll call and let you know, our legislature know that we're going to, we have the right to score the upcoming vote. And they get very nervous because they, you know, they don't want to be scored negatively and yet they're getting a lot of pressure to vote a certain way and this and that. So it's a really excellent accountability tool for us. And we have a tool for not only the scorecard, but as you'll see on our website, we have one for the governor and also the attorney general. And actually found a mechanism by which to actually look back at our, our Supreme Court justices and ascertain sort of how the decisions coming out of the Supreme Court are actually also impacting our natural resources. It's been challenging over the years, especially with term limits, is that oftentimes the votes that we most want to see make it to the floor of the House and the Senate for a real vote never actually get there. And so how do we actually measure the fact that there are some legislators that have very important positions and gavels and committees that never actually allow particular pieces of legislation to advance. Pieces of legislation that would pr better protect our drinking water or you know, move us forward in the, era, in, the, in the avenues of clean energy. Sometimes these things just never make it past the committee. And so how do you, if you don't get the, 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 leg the legislation to the floor of the House or the Senate, you never get a full picture of how these guys and gals are really doing in their role of representing us in office. The other thing is to look at our list of endorsements, which is in a separate part of the, of the, uh, of the website, because we actually have a questionnaire that each of the candidates seeking our endorsement must fill out. And those questions get much deeper than just the snapshot that you'll see through our scorecards. Um, and then if you don't see your, your, your representative there, you might ask them why. Did they seek our endorsement? If not, why? Um, if they did and they didn't get it, that's interesting, right? They really are very approachable. They're, they expect their constituents to be in touch with them. And the more their constituents are in touch with them, the more they understand what people in their districts really care about. In this space with climate change and huge challenges to our water, I don't know how I remain an optimist, but I do. We pulled ourselves out of an of immense challenges historically. We pulled ourselves out of the Great Depression. We created jobs programs that put people back to work and rebuilt our country or built our country. I really believe that if we want to do this, we can do it. And with the kind of um, response that I'm seeing as the voters in the state related to the issues that matter most to them, and their deep desire to make sure that the water coming out of their taps is safe and free of toxins. I believe that there's the political will, that if the right leadership is in place, there's the political will to take us to that place. Because there is nothing more important, nothing more important than having access to and being able to afford clean water for our families.